Hi, this is Mika with Leap Taken. And here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft related, manifesting law of attraction, and everything else in between. So today's topic is gonna to be about relying on your spiritual path when things go left. So when things go wrong, when things are imploding, when life sucks, when you have a diagnosis that's life-threatening, when your loved one does, when someone gets hurt, when you lose someone, um, relying on your spiritual path. So the first thing I just want to sort of do um, is to say this, because uh, this is a delicate subject. We've all been there. I've been there. So I'm just going to speak for myself. I've definitely been there. I've had job loss. I've had um, deaths in the family. I've had personal losses. I've had illness um, myself and others, you know, people I love. Things, life happened, things have happened. So when that happens, when things don't, you know, go as planned and it's in a negative way, it is very easy to sort of think that um, magic isn't real. Uh, the spiritual path that you're on isn't working. Um, nothing is what you believed it to be because why would these bad things be happening to you or people you love and care about? So I just wanted to address that part first because I think that that's kind of where a lot of us go when things go wrong, especially if you are beginning this path for the first time or you've sort of never really gone all in and you're coming from a Christian background or organized religious background where they sort of have um, fail safes for, for that type of thinking. Um, I, I used to be Christian, so I understand, you know, you're, especially if you're active and you go to church, people are going to pray over you, pray on you. The words, uh, you, if you're a Christian, you probably heard this. Um, this is God's plan. We don't know what it is. You know, we just pray to God to keep us safe, things like that. Um, things that kind of put you at peace in the moment of crisis. So what about if your spiritual path involves witchcraft? Right? <laughs> We're, you know, let me start off. If you are fortunate enough to have women or men in your life who follow the same spiritual path or something similar or just witchcraft in general, hopefully, you know, and you, you know them and you can trust them, you can experience the very same type of comfort that the organized religions can provide to each other in time of crisis and need and things like that. Hopefully, but if you're like me and you're solitary, you have more virtual friends uh, who follow your path as opposed to in, in real life friends. Well, it gets a little tricky. So a couple things from a solitary witch perspective. Have you done a spell? You may not be able, well, let me rephrase that. The way the law of nature works, bringing someone back to life who's already been dead and gone, buried, you know, um, no. <laughs> so not that kind of spell. But have you done a spell to help yourself with grieving? Um, if it's a diagnosis for someone you love, cancer. So I'm going to just give some hard examples here. You know, have you done a spell to ease their transition through this process? Have we looked at healing energy spells? Are we preparing teas? Are we just making positive energy? Because what we have to remember sometimes is that it's not always about that shouldn't be happening to that person and more, especially if it's happening to someone else. Is there a lesson? Is there, is this their journey, their path? You, you know, you don't know. You just know it hurts because your friend, your loved one, family, whatever is going through this, this sucky situation and they don't deserve their good person. You love them. They don't deserve to suffer like this. I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, but have you done any spell work? Because if you're practicing witchcraft normally, in times of crisis, in times of need, have you done a spell? This seems simple enough, but sometimes people sort of don't approach it that way. I, I was one of those people years ago uh, during a, a situation in our lives where my husband was working more as an independent contractor and the contracts dried up and it got bad got real bad <laughs> so financially it was bad so this you're talking like run a housing crisis around 2008 and a lot of companies were just laying people off it was just 
not good. It was just like one failed contract after the other. They were all pulling out, like just pull, the rug was being pulled up from under us. And I was practicing at that time, a uh, little budding practicing, but I was still practicing and learning. So when that time came and it was like a domino effect of, you know, you know how it is once one thing and it's like, boom, 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 more things kept happening related to the first issue. And it was just bad. It felt bad and I felt defeated and it was really a dark time. And I felt a blockage where I couldn't connect with my witchcraft. I couldn't connect with any higher intuitiveness or I just felt a disconnect and I gave up. And that's the worst thing I could have done because it sucked even more because I didn't have anything to rely on and I felt adrift and I felt lost and uprooted and ungrounded. Like I felt the un of everything. It was sucky and um, you know, that affects the relationships that you have with friends, my husband, um, cause I just, I wasn't feeling good and I just didn't seem to know how to rely on my spiritual path to get me through the experience. I didn't know how to do that because in my mind, I needed to be happy or um, positive in order to practice witchcraft because, you know, it was for getting something you wanted. Well, long story short, <laughs> I'm glad I got out of that. And, um, you know, it's very real because my ancestors showed me things after that experience, shortly, very shortly after that experience, we were able to get through it. Um, and uh, it required us actually moving out of state. We moved to another state and um, I came into, I was able to come in contact with people who would really help me and get, help me get grounded and rooted and sort of remind myself of who I am and what I'm capable of. So in my case other people were involved and they were able to help me but i was adrift for some time unnecessarily so um so back to the question have you done a spell have you done have you any workings did you create a charm did you do anything to bolster yourself or someone else in the situation you know because that's what magic is for it doesn't mean that you can fix it all because maybe it's not supposed to be fixed and that's a tough pill to swallow. It might not be our job to fix everything, to make it all go away. That experience of kind of hitting, feeling like we lost everything and rock bottom and, you know, really needing to depending on other people for that for months. It was one of for months of this, this situation of, of us kind of getting ourselves back together again. Let me tell you something that taught us a lot and it taught us that we could survive anything. I don't want to say I'm glad I went through the experience, but I'm glad that I was able to understand what was necessary to why it was necessary to go through that experience. And I believe my ancestors showed up and showed out in that situation because we needed to understand that and we need to know we can be together no matter what, no matter how horrible gets and we have had some doozies thrown at us uh deaths in our family in our close family and we have stayed together through it all so um that's that was important for me as far as relationship wise and understand for me family is everything so let me just start over so my family was able to be intact through all of these experiences and i think that was my takeaway along with some other things obviously um from the experiences that we went through. I wish I'd done a spell. I wish I did some divination. I would have understood that sooner and most likely would have put myself in a better mind frame so that we could have gotten out of that experience because I wasn't myself and it's hard to sometimes be in a relationship with someone who seems even more negative and he's out, you know, my husband's out trying to make it right. He's picking up, he's traveling, he's doing this, he's doing that to try to get us back into the situation we were before. And I was in a headspace of like, and just shock, it's all, my life is different, everything's gone. Like, I couldn't figure out how to get to the next step of life, you know, to put things back together again. Um, had I done divination, had I taken the time to have done any sort of workings, anything, a ritual, something, 
I would have understood that this was leading me to someplace better, not to go back to what was, but to an even better situation. But, you know, if I just done something <laughs> besides wallow. Um, the other thing is, which is kind of what I talked about, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to need other people who aren't in a craft, who don't practice witch witchcraft. It's okay. They are full-blown Muslim, they are full-blown Christian or whatever it is, it's okay to still ask for their help if you need help. Just because you're the big bad witch and you're rocking spells and, and it's coming together, um, doesn't mean that things never happen to you that you didn't plan on. Also, I just wanna point out, um, without challenge, there's no growth. So that experience, from that experience on, I became the big bad witch, you know what I mean? That for me, that, that pushed me even more into understanding and knowing what I was capable of as it relates to my ancestors, the universe, the mundane world, everything. So that, that sort of catapulted me even more into it. And the people I came across had no reason to even talk about witchcraft with me or talk about anything. And, and just, it was basically, I had gotten a reading done. And, and they did it for me uh, for free. They wanted to do it for me. They wanted to tell me something. And they told me something about me basically being what I knew I was, a witch. And I they didn't know that. We didn't have that. I didn't know this person for them to know this information about me. Um, but it's okay to ask for help. And in that case, I was asking for help without even knowing it. I didn't verbalize it. But I did not say no thank you when she offered it to me and I needed that help. When a family member offered to help us and they knew that I still was uh, following a different path, at the time I would have, I was more Wiccan. Um, they still, and they were not, they still helped because I was their fam family, you know, friend or whatever. They knew that they would still help me. It didn't matter, that none of that mattered. So none of that should matter to you either. And you shouldn't feel guilt or you shouldn't feel, um, like maybe you're not as good of a witch because this situ this crisis situation is happening to you. Um, also, which I kind of alluded to, is commune with your ancestors, commune with your deities or deity, whoever you know you you have this relationship with. Make sure that you're in communication with them. Ultimately, you want to always be in communication with your ancestors. Do daily rituals, something, so you're always in communication. But when things go left, as I said, when crisis occurs, when the bad things happen in life to us or to those that we love, it's even more important to not decide they're allowing this to happen to me so they've turned their back on me. That's not how it works. And by the way, again, challenges bring growth. Now, I don't invite these challenges into my life. Let me be very clear right now. I like the speed that I'm growing. I don't need any challenge. <laughs> but, but I know that through challenge, hopefully we can grow. We rise to the occasion and we grow. The worst thing that could happen is that you don't and you just keep taking a victim mentality or woe is me. Maybe this magic crap doesn't work. Maybe all this ancestor stuff doesn't work because bad things keep happening to me. Well, thinking like that, guess what? Bad things will keep happening to you because you're not picking up on lessons, you're not picking up on messages, symbolism, you're leaving all that behind because you think everything's supposed to be easy. Name one person you personally know for a fact has an easy life, everything comes easy. I grew up where I was told, oh, well, white people, you know, because I'm black, obviously. Like, oh, well, white people, they, they don't have the types of issues we have. I've, been, I've heard people say this to me since I was younger. And of course, obviously, I've, I grew up, you know, I went to more diverse high school, realized, well, that's not true. Because <laughs> I made friends, you know, you, all you got to do is grow up and live in the world a little bit. And you realize that's not true. But the people who were older than me at the time, had me under the assumption they didn't have the same struggles in life as we have because they're white and the reality i don't even want to say they have different struggles they just have struggles i don't have the same struggles as a single black mom you know in new jersey projects right now i don't have her struggles we just happen to be black but we don't have the same struggles but we have struggles you see what i'm saying we we 
have conflict in our life sometimes. We have obstacles in our life sometimes. Okay. White, Hispanic, Asian, African, everything else in between. You know, we all have struggles. We all have things that occur, you know. And I'm just picking race as, as, a, as an example here, but the same could be said for gender, you know, the same could be said for sexuality. If you don't experience what I'm experiencing, the type of troubles that I'm going through and things like that. Listen, we all suffer at some point with struggles and obstacles and issues and all that sort of stuff. Um, commune with your ancestors, commune with your deity, spirit, commune. How do you commune? Tarot cards. If you have some, you... Uh, active um, automatic writing, you know, just kind of meditate for a minute and, and just take a pencil, a piece of paper, and, and you would just, your hand just goes, and whatever's there is the messages that, that are coming to you. Just simply be and meditate if, if you're lucky enough to get your brain to shut off, shut off long enough so you can concentrate on meditating. Do that. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, do that. But commune or just be quiet. Don't try to meditate. Just sit there and just be quiet and see what happens. Something pop in your head. Go to sleep. Pay attention to your dreams. Journal. That's what I'm talking about. Commune. Um, and again, I, I'm sort of just reiterating what I said in the beginning. Sometimes there's lessons to be learned. I don't love that idea. I don't love the theory that we go through things because we need to learn something. Um, but I also don't believe things are just coincidental. I think everything happens for a reason. I don't I don't have all the answers and I don't always know the reason, but I don't think everything's just an accident. Sometimes yes, things just happen, but we say that because we don't know what the greater plan was. Um, I don't know, I'd like to believe there, there has to be a, a logical plan uh, of why things happen. Now on the flip side, when things go to horrible the way they're going right now with all these mass shootings occurring. When I see these babies dying and, and adults and, you know, you hear the story about the one in uh, Texas where, you know, the parents, the husband was in front of the wife. The wife turned around with the baby and when they were shot, both of them were shot, uh, they crushed the baby, breaking the baby's bones. The baby healed, of course, but it's like, what would be the law? Like, why would that happen? What entity, what spirit would God would answer? Like, who would let this happen? And those are the times it's easy to kind of say, well, none of this is, is, means anything. Because why, if something has so much control and can make so many things happen in our life, would it not have protected those people? Those are great questions. And we should ask these questions. And maybe we should commune with our ancestors and maybe we can get some answers through them. Because uh, I don't think any of us have one answer that will fit everybody's question you know what i mean um so go to your deity go to your ancestors and ask them because it doesn't make sense to me and so that's something i definitely would say why is this not why but how can we make this stop <laughs> like how do you make this stop because you know babies babies getting crushed because their bones being broken because someone hates someone so much but I have my theories on that, and I'll, I'll be doing a video about that. Uh, not anything to do with politics or race or anything like that, more about just energy. And um, that's why I said I don't think things just happen for a reason. It's hard to believe, but we're not all light and love out here. And we all are responsible for energy and creating energy and releasing energy out into the ethers or into the world. Um, and people who hate, can do that too. People who have hate in their heart or just, you know, sick with hate, they can also emit energy and send it out and start a chain reaction for their desires, for what they want to happen. We don't like to think about it from that angle, but they can wield their magic too. They may not be calling it that, but they're doing the same thing. Um, and they find like minds and you know what they say when you come together in numbers and when you raise energy is like a coven coming together raising energy um they unite over the internet and they raise energy 
and they act on that energy. So um, I think the way the universe is set up, it could go either way. Um, so it was not an accident. It was an intentional thing, you know. Well, if, it feels like it. It feels like that when it's you. You know, you're the victim of, or someone you love, of course. Like if they just hadn't been in the store, this would have never happened. If they, had, if I had just gotten home sooner, they wouldn't have been there, or something like that. You know, we think like that. I mean, that's 9-11, you know, I was living in New Jersey at the time and I was in a government building at the time that was happening. Um, and the pure chaos as that continued throughout the day and I'm in Jersey and I'm hearing it, what's happening in New York and then DC, was it DC first? And then in Pennsylvania, I'm not sure the order. The point is I'm in the middle and I'm like, whoa, I'm standing like what what's happening? We all thought this was just a world attack, at least on the Northeast, you know, um, it's really easy in those moments to just kind of blank out. Now, I have mad respect for people of other different faiths who automatic pray, automatically drop to their knees and pray in those crisis crazy situations they drop to their knees and they pray to their god immediately and let me tell you i am now one of those people i don't drop on my knees and pray to my god but i do use my witchcraft immediately i will say a mantra i'll say some sort of uh charm in my head i will say it very quickly and i'll so it is done so it, so i will it so it is done so will it be and I will repeat that. I'll say something three times. I'm aware of how many times I'm saying it. I've been in tough spots and situations where like it's an immediate thing where I see somebody a little crazy or you see an accident occurring. Like you, you know, when things are happening, it's like a slow motion, but you're approaching, you're pumping on a brake. You know, you're trying to break the car and you try not to, to hit something or, you know, someone hit you and those types of situations. I break into it and let make that a habit of doing it. And how do you make that a habit? By staying in a constant situation, well, I don't want to say situation, but ritual. That's what I'm trying to say, ritual. <laughs> Daily rituals, staying connected. I said commune with your ancestors. Do consist of spell work. Spells are drinking a cup of coffee in the morning, pouring your sugar in, stirring it, saying some words over your day. That's, that's a spell, okay? That's a spell. A spell is something as simple as when you are making dinner and you add salt. Salt, we use salt for protection here. Even if that meal's just for you, protection. Make sure that I am blessed uh, and all good things come to me and anything negative or anything that is against what I am willing. Uh, something along those lines, you know, um, never enters my realm, never enters this home, never enters my being, and you sprinkle your salt and your food. That's a spell. You know, use what you will, but you see what I'm saying. You make it a habit, a daily ritual of using your spell work. It doesn't mean nothing bad will happen to you, but it means that you are charged. Like you, we charge our crystals, we are fully charged and ready to go and wield our magic and wield our use of witchcraft uh, to help get us through or help someone else get them through whatever they're going through. Um, there is nothing as of yet in the years that I've been on this earth that protects us from tragedy that protects us from evil, that protect, and when I say protect us, I mean just being a bystander. Here's the thing, no one has shot at me. My family has, as of, thank goodness, I'm very grateful, <laughs> not been involved in any mass shootings. None of these things at this stage, and I don't, I have no intention on, on wishing that, that it does, has happened to us. I'm very grateful for that. Um, at the same time, and I do magic and protection on my family all the time. At the same time, we're still affected by it happening. So when I say protection magic, I still feel hurt. I still feel pain because I know others are feeling this, are going through, they have, you know, kids are being killed. Uh, people, loved ones, somebody's mom, somebody's dad, their sister. You know, I was running to go grab some bread and my life is gone. And my whole family can't function without me, or at least they feel like they can't. 
you know, I I feel that. And I think we all do. So I rely on my spiritual path to help me get through that. So when I say we can't, there's nothing to keep us from tragedy, I'm experiencing their tragedy. I'm an empathetic person. I feel that. I can feel. We. I think we all can. Even if you say, oh, this is a shame and you try to shut it off to shield yourself, you felt something. You're still feeling that residual pain that others are going through. So there's no protection from that. You know, well, yeah, I guess there is. It's called being like a psychopath. You don't have any emotion, you know, you don't feel empathy for anybody. You could go that route and just become a complete psychopath, a narcissistic person. Uh, that might help, you know. I, hey, I don't judge if that's that's how you want to function and deal with, with life's um, troubling times, by all means. But there's some fallout when you go that route. Uh, but for the most part, we all feel it. So there's no protection, is what I'm saying, from the effects of tragedy in any capacity. Um, but that's where my spiritual path, that's where witchcraft comes into play. That's where all that comes into play. That's why I care about the full moon. I care about the new moon. I care about the quarter moon. I care about the seasonal changes and what that brings. My horoscope, astrology, all those things matter to me because I see how it works in my life. I stay in that space. I think I've read before, is, um, it's a meme or something that says, stay in your magic. I stay in my magic. Stay in your magic. Because when you're in your magic and sh stuff happens, <laughs> You can handle it. You can get through it. You can help someone else get through it. A friend, a loved one who's going through something horrible. You can help them too. And you have a place to refuel. You can recharge like your crystals. You, Because you have the ability to do so. Because you have a better, higher understanding of how energy works. Um, how the universal law works. All that sort of... Um, those ideology, you're you're a little bit more in the know than maybe someone who doesn't study this sort of stuff. So, yeah, stay in your magic. Rely on your path. It hasn't forsaken you because things are bad. Because there's no such thing as someone not having any sort of challenging experience. Um, we all have. And then it's perception because what you might consider troubling, somebody will say, that's nothing. I had job loss and I had no place to go. I had to live in my car. Somebody else would say, you had a car? I'd live on the street. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, it's all also perspective on what's really, you know, bad or what, what's really a struggle in your life. That's a whole other topic, by the way, on, on, on thinking of it like that as well. So your struggles, <laughs> your conflicts in life, your obstacles, your challenges, can still happen, will happen, because you have your own life path and journey and there are things that are going to happen that are supposed to happen. And maybe you're supposed to make a decision or maybe you're supposed to sit your ass down and just be. I don't know. It's your life. But commune with your ancestors, commune with the, your deity, the spirits, universe, and find out. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. Again, I'm Mika. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. That'd be awesome. And subscribe if you haven't already. And while I've been talking, if you've been hearing a beeping in the background, my apologies. I realized I set the oven timer. I took something out. I set it, but I started talking on this video and I didn't want to stop it. So that's what that noise was. <laughs> if you've been hearing it, it's kind of like low, but it's in the background. Again, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.